basically the, well, my dream child originally, I guess. But um, just wanted to bring back, you know, good music of yesteryear. You know, something with a bit of quality and a bit of substance. And um, yeah, basically just enjoy it. So I tried, well, I started putting that together in 2014 with sort of a revolving cast of people. Just whoever was available locally in that until we come across the right <laughs> the right guys. The right <laughs> tool for the job. That's right. So um, we've definitely found the right tools. And <laughs> and um, yeah, we finally got a record together and onwards and upwards from here. Well, from my point of view, I've got other projects on the go. My main band, Psychonaut, it's in its 20th year this year. And I've been concentrating more on Maverick because it's good to be a sort of a side player for a change rather than being the central central guy in a band. Get more pressure. So at least now I can sit back and let someone else do all the hard work. <laughs> just get to play guitar. No, well, I would concur. Yeah, it's a... Uh very late. Probably maybe five years ago it was pretty pretty lively. But I think um, with a few local venues, key local venues sort of changing direction and closing up shop and things like that, the, the hard rock scene sort of fell away with it. And um, yeah, I think it's probably just the the times and that, but yeah, the indie kind of style has really taken off so we're we're effectively the black sheep. But how many days are we <laughs> <laughs> well, the era of pub rock has kind of come and gone now, where you can go out from Wednesday night to about Sunday night and watch yeah. bands, whether they're original or covers. It's kind of dissipated now, taken over by DJs, some guy with acoustic guitar. So we're trying to have keep that old mentality where okay, it's just raw, rough rock music, um, groove so people can dance to it or move to it and drink beer without being a retro act. Yeah, well, like I said, the, the aim of the game was to to try and not not recreate or reproduce what was done, but just you know create a sound that has a distinct sort of reflection back to that. You know, that reminds you of the good old days when you know the guys, those sorts of guys were making that sort of music, and and um, yeah, all, all the influence you know comes from that era because you know, that's when the best stuff was made. So where else would you go? But you know, as far as individual bands, it's uh, it's pretty hard to put a fine point on it because there's just so many. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's about having, just stripping everything away. It's, it's easy to become self-indulgent these days, especially with home recording studios. You need to get the product perfect and this is for too much time doing it. Rather than to say, here's the meat of a song, let's all contribute to it. Think, okay, it works well, the arrangement seems to flow. Oh, yeah. There's some lyrics, throw it all together, and then it's just a song. And rather than just labour on it for two years or whatever it is, just get in there and get it done and enjoy what you're doing, yeah. rather than this well thought out process. I think being a rock band, yes, I think uh, the days of, you know, making it in your country before you venture out to you know to the US or the UK or wherever wherever it be. I think um, that's an old mentality. I think you know now with digital media and yeah the state of, of music in general, there basically isn't a market to conquer for rock and roll. So the only way I see personally for, for a rock band to to basically progress, succeed is to essentially jump immediately straight out of Australia. You know, into a, to where there is a market, say the US, the UK, and whatnot, and then, like everything else in the world, Australia seems to adopt the views and opinions of, of America that just sort of filters back down. With every, you know, everything is the case. You know. I think with the track listing, if you look at a lot of classic albums, I thought I'd give you an example right now, but they start off with a good rocker, then comes something equally as rocking and then by the third song they bring it down a bit and then um, song four bring it back up again and I think we recorded this 
and put the track listing in that order because we're thinking vinyl where okay this is your fourth song okay, let's get off our asses turn the record over and get into the next one but it's also about the flow of it and also what keys the songs are in because you can't just have everything you know in e or in a so you've got to kind of break it up mm -hmm. as well yeah. And it's also it's probably just a you know coincidence or happy coincidence, but you know free with the intro, the way the way it comes in, it's yeah. a nice introduction to the record, sort of um, yeah. Well, it just it, it introduces the record nicely, and you know free itself, the title, um, basically works well. So, you know, Maverick, we're now well, we're free, we're out, we're on the air. You know, yeah. It's happening. Now. So it kind of you know works in a few different ways, but um, at the end of the day. That track listing sort of felt best to us. As, yeah, as far as you know, flow and feel of a record. So. And I think the, it's the, a good song to start off with because it's the Craig ages ago. The lyrics kind of remind me of Alice Cooper's song called Teenage Lament. Which is 74. About, yeah, that's <laughs> teenagers, yeah. you know, I want to get out of bed and fuck going to work and fuck school and fuck this and fuck you. And it's got that sort of attitude about it. We're loosely based on Craig's guitar because he uses a uh, Gibson, Gibson Firebird. And the yeah. bass. And obviously, is a Thunderbird. Yeah. And because yeah, um, that's, that's you know, he's a Linus Skinner fan, which I'm more Allman Brothers. Yeah. And I thought everyone says Freebird this, and I hate that fucking joke. I'm Freebird. I can't. I don't even know the song to edit that part out. Definitely. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> well, I don't know how it goes because I've never really listened to it. Plus, Firebird just means you know the old Phoenix type mentality, Ash. Yeah. The connotations of it, I guess, yes. you know, the rebirth. But it's not like we fell from anywhere because we're starting from somewhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, but it's almost like if you were to think of it in those terms, you know, like rock and roll had its, had its period and sort of faded out, and you know, the Phoenix or the Firebird you know, you know, is reborn from the ashes. And yeah, and, and the rock. rock music is always going to be there, it always has and always will be. It just comes and goes and mutates. Um, at least with Mar Maverick, I know Craig does most of the lyrics, but it's more about doing things in life that aren't just, it's not always just about your emotion. Yeah, you've got to still got to have an element of danger in what you do, especially in rock music. You know? I mean, it's not like we're going with like Guns N' Roses. Or that's living on the edge of a cliff. Um, yeah, we're still we trying to have that. To be yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think comparatively, lyrically, maybe towards ACDC-ish, without you know, too many sexual overtones or innuendo or all that tacky, tacky stuff. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of Aussie life in it. If you like good music, kind of, I think, regardless of specific genres and things like that, because there is a bit of variance in it, but uh, if, if you like just good music, you know, from anything from, you know, from the Beatles, uh, through the you know some of the 80s stuff, well you know skin up the 70s, any, any, anything rock, I think, I think you'll enjoy it. It's, uh, yeah, we, we've noticed people that come along and listen, you know, from different walks of life, different ages, they all get along with it, just because it's, um, it's got a, a bit for everyone. So, so people in my age bracket and beyond, you know, would probably appreciate it because there's a lot of there's this easy top, uh, Stones, maybe some Alice Cooper in there, uh, Humble Pie, which I'm a huge yeah, fan of. Yeah. Uh, I think that type of thing, but I'm trying to reach younger people as well, saying, look, there's a life beyond doof doof or mm. all this other manufactured stuff out there where you don't need to go to a festival and get fucked up over. Not shit, just to enjoy it. You know, bring back that raw, raw power. thinking I know this one straight away <laughs> Sabotage by Black Sabbath the ultimate album it's just got all the um, classic hard rock metal type song subjects war madness drug abuse you know, it's, it's great I love that album and you know it took well over a year to make and back then it was, that's considered a long time pre death like the days yeah well <laughs> This is when uh, people sang and that's the tape they used. But um, 
Yeah, that would be my album of choice to be in that studio. I would have uh, basically just been in the studio for everything that Pink Floyd did. Pink just so I can watch David Gilmore. Yeah. I wouldn't. Oh, I'll, I'll check out the other guys every now and then. I would. That's me. I think just to be live a life that's full and we are satisfied with it and you know hand down your knowledge and guidance down to the next person be it your own children or whatever so they've got something like that to inherit so we just keep that going along until you know the world blows up and the cockroaches or the planet of the apes actually happens <laughs>